Hey guys, this is Frugal Success, Frugal Power. Just being everything frugal coming at you. Now, this is a part two. I, I would call it a part two in terms of the diversification that I mentioned in the earlier video where I just walked you through my dad's small portfolio. So there's a couple of things I want to talk to you about as a part of the second video. If you haven't subscribed yet, and if you haven't hit that notification or like button, please, there's a lot of good content. I'm going to use just everyday people investing kind of analogy and and I'll talk about some of my failures and, and disappointments. I'll talk about the dot bomb or dot com in the early 2000s where <laughs> I lost almost $200,000 at that time. I was fresh out of college and I lost $200,000. It was an oh my God moment. And what made it worse was that it was not my money. It was my dad's money. It was his retirement money. I'm going to take you through my experience with that, how that compares right now to some of the exuberance that we have. I don't know if some of my viewers have been here long enough. They have heard of Alan Greenspan, where he talked about the irrational exuberance that sent the stock market crashing back in the days. I just want to do some analysis as well. We're going to talk not very complicated topics. We're going to just talk common sense stuff. Um, and, and that's what also being frugal is about. It's about frugal with your time, knowing what kind of analysis, how much do you go into? Is it analysis by paralysis? Can you make that decision? Sometimes you have to make a jump and you have to live with the consequences. So good actions. And that's one other lesson I've learned and I'm going to share that with you on another video. The topic today for our next few minutes is going to be about diversification and entering the market. So one of the things that you want to do, say for instance, as you were looking at my dad's portfolio as a use case, he had about $10,000 in the beginning, right? So what were some good stocks I thought would be, well, it's going to weather very well. It's going to have a good opportunity for a rebound when it was a dip. But now we're looking at sort of a recovery, but we're going to look at how we can diversify, still get our hands into a lot of good stocks, good companies. And that's the key thing, buy good companies. And that's what we're going to look at, how we can diversify, say, for instance, $10,000, whether it's $1,000. And one of the things that I believe is getting into either something that's indexed, that has a broader basket of a market, or an ETF. And I want to take you through two things that I have in this basket of his stock portfolio. It's going to be ARKK and ARKG. I'm going to show you what's inside this basket and why I think as you're entering the market the first time, it's good to buy some sort of ETF with some diversification and at the same time, give you a good potential return for your money. I'm gonna take you through and walk you through what these stocks and ETFs look like and from the basis of why I believe diversification, which is not putting all your eggs in one basket, would mean for your portfolio and what that would look like just over in terms of my holding my stock, okay? So with that said, let's get right into it, guys. So continuing on as a part three for diversification. So this is what I referenced a little earlier uh, regarding his TD account on the two shares each of ARKG and ARKK. Let's start with the ARKK and, and really focus on diversification slash risk slash what you can maximize your holdings across just a number of companies. So say for instance, in, in this example, we had $1,000. And that's really what I was trying to work with in terms of putting this into two different funds, but I actually split it up into a little something else. So take a look at the detail quote. So where we're trading at ARKK is close to 148 as of this evening on February 4th. Um, the thing that we're gonna look at primarily is what's in the portfolio? What is the holding? So for those Tesla fans who love Tesla, I'm a, I'm a shareholder as well, I'm not pushing any stock or anything like that. What you see is that Tesla is almost 11% weighing. There's Roku, CRISPR, Square, Teladocs, Invite, Zillow, Pure Storage, Proto Labs, and Spotify. So it's well rounded in terms of just being out there in the different sectors. What you see here as you go through this, you'll see that it's across different areas 31% in healthcare consumers, communication, also technology. So there's some funds that are really heavily weighted in technology or healthcare. And I'll show you the genomics one because that's just focused on next generation genomics. But this is a well diversified type of investment because what you see is that you have 
good companies that's across different sectors and they're all giving you returns. So just in case if things don't go well in one sector, it's gonna bounce each other off. It's, it's really going back to don't put all your eggs in one basket situation. So we can take a look at the chart. And I know some of the questions would be, how do you know when you want to enter the market? So as, as a famous, I'm gonna quote two famous people that have mentored me a great deal. One first person older gentleman said, it's not how you time the market, it's really how long you've been in the market. So even today, if you take out a one day chart, you can see the fluctuations. There's a little bit of fluctuation. It's probably 50 cents or even more this morning. It's going up. But I enter the market probably at around the 125 mark. So let's go back to a three month chart. We're gonna take a look at the 125 mark. And I believe I actually made that investment right around here in December. Um, and you'll see that it was right here, we're 125, and this was probably the second week of December when I added those two shares of G and K from the ARC fund into the portfolio. You know, after that time, there's been ups and there's been some downs. It's obviously, there's still some volatility, as you can see, with just the holdings. There's gonna be some ups and downs naturally with the positions. So. Let's take a look at ARKG here, genomics. So let's contrast that too. There's obviously the ups and downs, like any cycles within the three months, but let's take a look at the year. So as you can see in September, if you bought high at say $63 and it fell to 54, if you held it long enough, you would see that it's still climbing up to 108 where you are today. So again, it's how long you're holding it. Good products, hold it. And then the other thing is how you have timed this market is kind of hard, but just know that you can hold it. And just a little tidbit, just even within the same day of purchase, someone always said buy on the red and sell on the green. So what you want to do is when most people are selling on a red day, take that as an opportunity to buy, buy at a discount. So this is one of the first lessons of being frugal comes in. You have to do certain things that are different or the opposite, contrarian. So when most people are running for hills and they're giving up their position, take it, buy it on the red. And whereas most people are, are looking to buy on green days, like today, take that as an opportunity to sell. Sell on the green, buy on the red. That's one of the first things I would like to share with you. Now let's take a quick look at the portfolio. The name itself is Genomic. You'll probably see that 93.81% of all the assets, all these companies, are within genomics. So you don't really have a lot of diversification outside this one sector. However, if you want to play this sector or invest in this sector, it gives you the diversification within this sector. So you're able to pick up some new companies, good companies, that's all here in one basket. And I'll give you an example. Teladocs is probably $275 currently. If you want a share of Teladocs and you only have $1,000, you can only buy four shares and that does not give you that diversification or the return. One of the things that I would give you a quick example of diversification and gains is let's use Teladocs and ARKG and let's go to Google right here. So let's look at our friend right here, ARKG, and let's compare it to Teladocs. And let's see what we have for our return. In this example, you can see that ARKG in blue over the span of the last three months has done better than Teladocs. Teladocs is up from a percentage standpoint, 34%, and ARKG is up 49 and a half. So that, this is where diversification really helps, but it just happens that in this case, the diversification has even given you better return. Let's take a look at the one year. There are certain parts where Teladocs has been outperforming the ARKG fund over the span of a year, but where we are presently, ARKG is 208% increase while Teladocs is 154 and half. So again, diversify. This is a good example. It just happens that diversification also gave you better returns. Uh, generally, that may not be the case, but again, it's always a case by case. And in every case, I urge you to do your research to make sure you understand what is it that the product that you're putting your hard-earned money into. What is it? What makes up this stock? What business are they in? 
What's their vision? Those are some of the key questions you have to ask when you make investments for your future. So I hope this gives you a good view of diversification and return and how to minimize some of your risk. And if you have any questions, feel free to hit me up in the comments section. I would always love to get some feedback, what I can do to share some more of my information with you to help you. And hopefully we can share this journey together. And until the next time, stay frugal, stay safe. Thank you.